Assalamu alaikum. I welcome you all to another lecture on photovoltaic systems. In the last lecture, we discussed how the passive threading effects can lead to the hot spots and why we have the bypass diodes connected across a group of photovoltaic cells. In the today's class, we will see how these bypass diodes actually affect the current versus the voltage characteristics of a PV array, how the PV array exhibits the impact of bypass diodes on the array characteristics. So let us start with the with the today's lecture. For this today's lecture, we will take the example of the model which we discussed in the PV data sheet and based on that we will develop a string we will first study the impact of bypass diodes on a string level and after that we will extend that string into an array and then we will deduce some important points which are really helpful in understanding the current voltage characteristics of a partially shaded pv system so if you notice here this was the data sheet that we used from this data sheet, I'm only interested in, in these IV characteristics. This PV module is of 285 watt and at 1000 watt per meter square irradiance, it is capable of providing us a current equals to 9.46 ampere. So the short circuit current value is calculated for uh, or it is taken for the standard testing condition. Other than the standard testing condition, I will also estimate or write the value for this 600 watt per meter square irradiance and add this 200 watt per meter square irradiance. So at 600 watt, the ISC around 5.6 ampere, at this 200 watt per meter square irradiance, the same PV panel have this ISC equals to, equals to almost 1.9 ampere. So based on, on these three values, we will understand the impact of the bypass diode on the on the PV array. Let us say we have a string here which consists of four such panels that we have studied. So first of all, let me draw the these panels. This is one, panel number two, panel number three, and this is panel number four and they are connected in, in series. So this is constituting one string here and we have some resistive load connected here and this resistance is variable so we can vary it from a value r equals to infinity which will create an open circuit across this string and this r can also be made equal to zero which will operate these PV modules at the short circuit values. We will also assume one thing that with each of these PV modules, we have a bypass diode connected here. So we have one bypass diode with this module and with this module and with, with the last module. Uh, further to this, let us say that this module is M11, this is M21, this is M31 and this is M, M41. At G equals to, 1 kilowatt per meter square irradiance, the ISC of each module is equal to 9.46 ampere. At G equals to 0 0.6 kilowatt per meter square irradiance, we noted that the data sheet provides us a short circuit current value equals to 5.6 ampere. And at G equals to 0 0.2 kilowatt per meter square, this ISC is equal to 1.9 ampere. Now, there are two conditions. The first condition is said to be the uniform radiance condition. Uniform irradiation conditions is that condition where all the PV modules in a PV string, they receive equal irradiance. Whether it is all of them are receiving 1000 or they are receiving 200 watt 
per meter square irradiance or any other value, but all the panels have same irradiance received in a string. So, for the uniform irradiance condition, we notice that if this R is set at equal to infinity or if we have, if we are operating at the open circuit voltage, then we have the voltage available at across this resistance R is equal to 4 times the VOC, where VOC is the is the open circuit voltage of one module. Since we have four modules connected here, so this is four VOC. If we reduce this resistance, then the current will start to, to flow and it will have this type of a characteristic uh, curve. And this point corresponds to the ISC value because they are all connected in series. Therefore, this ISC is equal to the ISC value of this individual PV panel. Now, suppose that we have one of these panels under the shading condition. Let us say that this module M31, it has some cloud over it and therefore the irradiance received over this M31 is equal to 600 watt per meter square. Now if you notice here, we will follow the, the same logic as we have discussed under the uniform irradiation condition. Let us say this is the, let us say this is the shading pattern number one. Shading pattern number, number one and we will discuss how the IV characteristic curve actually changes. Four PV panels are connected here. Let us say this is VOC. This is 2 times VOC, this is 3 VOC and this is 4 VOC and if this resistance, this load resistance is set equals to infinity or these, these terminals are open circuited, then we are obviously operating at this, at this VOC value. Now as we decrease the value of the resistance R, the current starts to increase and it will have a current value equal to the amount of current which is supported by all the PV panels. So the current will, will be at, at this value until we reduce this resistance such that the amount of current required through the Ohm's law is greater than the amount of current which is which this module M31 can produce. So with this 600 watt per minute square irradiance, we can see that this current is equal to 5.6 ampere. So this PV module under the positive voltage region is not able to produce a current more than this 5.6 ampere current. So the current versus the voltage characteristics of this module under the shading condition is something like this one. So which is here, the, this is the VOC value. As you try to reduce the operating voltage, the maximum current that is possible through this PV module while we are having a positive voltage available that is equal to 5.6 ampere. Now if you further reduce the amount of this resistance such that the current increases, then beyond this 5.6 value, beyond this 5.6 ampere current, this module cannot support the current which flows through the rest of the modules which are not shaded in, the, in a string. So what happens that it will try to move into the negative voltage region to meet that amount of current. In doing so, the voltage developed across this M31 will turn on this diode which is connected in parallel with the, with the module and we call it a bypass diode. When it happens, then the current which is flowing through this module M41 will route through this diode and eventually through M2 and M1, it will become part of the, of the load current here. So this indicates us one another thing. When this diode is turning on, then the total amount of voltage available of the load is equal to the 3 VOC value. So here what we are having at 3 VOC value, one of the, of the panel is now short circuited because of the activation of the bypass diode. So it will rise from here and it will, it will have this type of a current 
where this value is the IAC value and that is equal to that is equal to 9.46 ampere of the current. So this is equal to 9.46 ampere and this current here is equal to 5.6 ampere amount of current. So let us let me write this as 5.6 ampere. So here we come to know about a PV string. The first thing is that under the uniform irradiation condition, a string will have will have a local maxima. A local maxima shall appear that which is somewhere here. And this local maxima is known as the natural local maxima. Natural local local maxima. It is that maximum out of power which is available on a PV string when none of the PV module is under the fading condition. And this local maxima under any uniform irradiation condition is equal to ns times the, the VOC value where ns is the number of PV modules under number of PV modules in series. So here we have four number of PV modules connected in this string and therefore this is near to uh, the value equal to the, to the source VOC. Now suppose that instead of having one photovoltaic module in this string under the shading condition, let us say that we have that we have this M41 also under the same irradiation condition such that the cloud is now covering both of these two modules. This means that this PV module M41 is also not able to produce an amount of current which, ex which can exceed this 5.6. So if you reduce this R such that the current try to exceed the value of this 5.6 ampere current, then these two modules which are incapable of producing a current greater than 5.6 ampere, they will, their bypass diodes will get activated and both of them will be cut off from the scene. In this case, let me call this as shading pattern number two. Shading pattern number two, in this case, IB characteristics will look like something that we will start from the from this four VOC value and achieve a current equals to 5.6 ampere amount of 5.6 ampere. At this two VOC, two of the bypass diodes will get activated. That is for module M31 and M41, and consequently at a voltage value equals to two times VOC the current shall rise to the short circuit value which is equal to 9.46 ampere. So this is I and here we have the, we have the V4. So now you see that for a given string, when one PV panel was shaded, then we have, we have this at three VOC that PV module is shorted. If we have two modules under the same irradiation condition, then this will happen at this two VOC value. So if we further suppose that this panel, which is, let us say this M11 is also under the shading condition, then this implies that this will also not be able to produce an amount of current greater than this 5.6 ampere. And in order to, to produce more amount of current to comply with the, with this low, lower value of the resistance and hence the higher value of this current, the di bypass diode of this M11 will also be activated and consequently only M21 will contribute for this high amount of current. So as we move further, the shading pattern number three says that, it says that the, the point where the, where we have the current rising from the 5.6 ampere to the short circuit value which is available that is equal to that is equal to the VOC value. So by increasing the number of photovoltaic modules in a string under the shading condition, the, the point at which the bypass diode activities is actually shifting from the higher voltage side to the lower voltage side. And this gives us an another important information about the 
behavior of a PV module connected in a series in a series configuration. Now, before we move ahead, let us create another shading pattern and we call it a shading pattern number four. Shading pattern number four. And this shading pattern says that we have now we have now M31 is under is under very thick cloud and consequently the radiance this module M31 is receiving is equal to 200 watt per meter square. So the condition here is a little bit complex because out of these four modules, this module is at the ISC value equals to 9.46. That is, it is receiving 1000 watt per meter square irradiance. Same is the case with this module M21. M41 is at G equals to G equals to 0 0.6 kilowatt per meter square, whereas this M31 is under 0.2 kilowatt per meter square irradiance. So similarly, like just like we have discussed the behavior of the PV array, we will analyze this pattern as well. And therefore, we will start with the IV characteristics. Let me draw the IV characteristics here. And this is one VOC, this is two VOC, this is three VOC, and this is the this is the four VOC value. Now we'll start with this four VOC value, and the because the resistance is high, we have we are we are, we are slowly gradually we are decreasing this amount of resistance so that the current will increase as we decrease the amount of resistance starting from this voc value where the resistance r is set as equal to infinity and then we gradually we decrease the value of this resistance so as we decrease the value of resistance this is the amount of current which is supported by the whole string till we reach this point equals to the 3 voc value at 3 voc value if we further reduce the amount of the resistance then the current will tend to increase beyond the value equals to 1.9 ampere because this is the maximum amount of current that a shielded panel with 200 watt per meter square irradiance can actually deliver. So with this 1.9 ampere amount of current, because the resistance is not demanding more amount of current, so one, di one module which is under the 200 watt per meter square irradiance, its bypass diode will get activated because that panel will try to move into the negative voltage region and consequently its bypass diode should act and once it acts, it will short circuit it from the system, leaving by we are at this three times the VOC value. At this three VOC value, the current will rise to a value which is equal to the amount of current which is supported by the module under the uh, under the 600 watt per meter square irradiance. And that module is only capable of providing a current equals to 5.6 ampere. So at this 5.6 ampere, uh, it will move on to this 5.6 ampere, and at this point where we are at the two VOC, we if we further increase the amount of resistance, if we further increase the amount of current by decreasing the resistance R, then at that particular time, we will see that the bypass diode connected across this module 41 will also be activated because this module is trying to move into the negative voltage region so that it can comply with the current demand through this load. So this diode will turn on and it will also be gone from the system, consequently leaving behind only these two panels which can support the larger amount of current. So at this particular time, the current will rise here and it will move into this, this point. So the current here is equal to, it is equal to 9.46 uh, 9 ampere. So this is 9.46 ampere. At this point, R is equal to, R is equal to zero. This current is equal to 5.6 ampere and this current is equal to 1.9 ampere corresponding to the irradiance equals to 200 watt per meter square irradiance. Further to this, if you see that the there are certain observations which we can uh, which in which we can derive from these four shading patterns and this uniform irradiation condition that we have just discussed. So into this, I will try to summarize these based on our analysis. So the first thing is that a PV string, it exhibits multiple local maxima 
let me call this as Lm, due to the bypass diodes during the during the partial shading condition. Right. This is the first thing uh, that we uh, see that it is because of the bypass diodes we are having these local maximas appearing on a IV characteristic curve of a of a PV string. The second thing is that the activation point of these bypass diodes is near or equal to to the to the VOC value. So here we have this VOC, this is 3 times VOC, this is 2 times VOC and this is the VOC value. So these bypass diodes activate in a close vicinity of these open circuit voltage values. The third point is that a string under, under shading has one point with maximum power and that is known as global maxima or the GM and this GM is easily visualized can easily be visualized by plotting the power versus the voltage characteristics of a given string. We further notice that a PV string is divided into, into n s regions which are separated by a value equal to, to VOC in which it exhibits the local maxima. So the local maxima always happens to be between these regions which are between the two consecutive values of the open circuit voltage. So for example, this is region number 1, let me use another pink, this is, this is region 1, this is, this is region 2, this is region 3 and this is region number 4. And this region number 4 is from 3 VOC to the 4 VOC value. Region number 1 corresponds to 0 to VOC value. Region number 2 is in between 1 VOC and 2 VOC. And subsequently, this region number 3 is happening between 2 VOC and the 3 VOC value. Now, with this thing in mind, we are now able to plot the IV characteristics of any PV array consisting of any kind of photovoltaic module just by looking onto the value of the IEC they can provide at any distinct value of the irradiance. And further to this, if we have three different values of irradiance, then we have three different jumps or three different knee points or three different points at which the bypass diode will activate. Consequently, we have this type of a curve here. So suppose that we, uh, if we, if we move on to the data sheet again, uh, we can see that the that this particular, that this PV module at 400 watt is giving something around 3.8 ampere amount of current. So 3.8 ampere is the, is the amount of current at 400 watt. So at, suppose that we have all the PV modules under different condition, then these, based on this theory, the characteristic curve may look like this one. So we will first of all draw the VOCs here. This is one VOC, this is two, this is three, and this is four. And suppose that we have four different distinct irradiation patterns. So it will start with this value somewhere here. And then at that three VOC value, the first module will uh, get short circuited and that module should have the least amount of irradiance. Then we have another PV module. It will short be shorted at the two VOC value. 
then the current will rise and it will reach this value and thereafter we have this fourth module which is under the maximum irradiation condition. So this type of IB characteristic shall be seen if we have in a four series connected modules, we have four patterns of, of irradiance. So this is at one string level. Now we will extend this analysis onto an array level which has two strings of the same four series connected PV modules and we will analyze how the overall characteristics of an array changes uh, in on the basis of the theory that we have just presented. So let me draw the, draw the two arrays first. So let me draw the first, uh, let me first draw the two strings. Because we have now the, we are creating an array, so we will, we don't want to have any circulating current. So I have also included two diodes here, which are known as the blocking diodes. Other than the blocking diodes, the array has the PV modules with bypass diode connected. So let us say that we have, we have the resistance here. R, let me make these as well and draw the bypass diodes here. So these modules are, this is 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 4, 1, 4, 2. Uh, let me symbolize this as string number 1. And this is string number two. The current flowing through this, or the outward current of the string one is I S one, and this current is I S two. And here we have the I P B and the voltage which is measured across this resistance. Let me call this as V P B. Further to this, we can also say that here we have the V O Cs across each of the P V modules, and consequently the total V P V which this system can reach is equal to the is equal to four times VOC. Whereas the total amount of IPV which can happen across this load is equal to two times the short circuit current values of the string one and the string two. So let us first of all draw the IV characteristic curve of this array under the normal irradiation condition. So under the uniform irradiance, We have one, two, three, four. So four BOC is the starting point here. And this type of a characteristic curve is can be drawn, where this current is equal to I S one plus I S two, and both of them are representing the short circuit current values of these PV modules. And the same model can be utilized. So this becomes equal to uh, something equals to eighteen point nine amperes, something around equal to eighteen point nine amperes. And this is equal to four times the VOC value. So we can also uh, see what is the VOC value. So the printout of or the print data sheet here, it tells us that the open circuit voltage here is equal to 39.25. 39.25. So this is equal to four times 39.25 volts. This is the VOC for this array at the uh, uniform irradiation condition. Now let me create the IV characteristics of these strings and then we will cumulate them to create the IV characteristics of, of, the, of the array level. So for this, for this let, me, uh, let us assume that this panel 4.2 is under the cloud here and so is the, these two panels are also under the cloud. So we have this type of a of a cloudy pattern on the on this particular on this PV array. With this thing in mind, we can see that the module M42, M31, and M41, they are all receiving an irradiance G equals to 600 watt per meter square, and therefore the maximum current these three can supply is equal to 5.6 amperes. So. The analysis or the key to the analysis is to individually draw the IV characteristic curve of this string and then we will add them together. 
So let me draw the IV characteristic curve for this thing number one. Let us say this is for thing number one. This is for for thing number two, and this is the at the array level. So for this thing S one, I this is V. This is for thing number two. This is I and this is V. This is I. This is V. So. In this thing number one, we have two panels under the shedding condition, and therefore, the amount of current which is available will have this type of a shape. So, at this two VOC, at this two VOC value, two of the panels will get short circuited because of the bypass diode, and consequently, we have this type of a IV characteristic curve. And this we have already studied in detail. For this thing S two. There is only one module under the shedding condition, and consequently, it will have. It will start from this value. Consequently, it will it will start from this value. And at this particular point, it will give us give rise to a higher amount of current, and thereby reaching the point where the voltage becomes equal to zero. Now, if you notice here, that one of the peak is actually occurring between this. Okay, let me draw. Let me highlight the four regions here. So this is the first region. The first region is between zero to VOC value. The second region is between one VOC to the two VOC value. The third region is between three VOC to VOC to the three VOC value, and the fourth region is. Fourth region is, is here. So this is R one, R two, R three, and this is R four. So if you notice here that the string S one has a knee point or the activation of a bypass diode in the region R two, while for the string S two, this is happening in in this region number in this region number three. So when we combine them together, we have to Add these regions into the cumulative current versus the voltage characteristics of the PV array. So what happened here is that at four VOC we will start, and we will reach we will reach this point. At this particular point, the string current I two increases, whereas the current through the string S one remains at five point six ampere. So this is let me write this as this is five point six ampere. This is also five point six ampere. This current is Equal to nine point. It is equal to nine point four six ampere. This is nine point four six, and this is also equal to this is also equal to nine point four six ampere. So when we start from this point, let me draw it again. When we start from this VOC value at the four VOC, we shall have a current that is equal to. 5.6 ampere from the string S2, and 5.6 ampere is coming from the string S1. So they both will give us 11.2 ampere. At the point 3 VOC, the current from the string S2 rises to a point, let us say, equal to 9.46 ampere, whereas the current is still 5.6 ampere for the string S1, and therefore it will rise to this point up till. The two VOC value. So here the current is equal to 5.6 plus. Let us say I I will just for the simplicity I will make it equal to 9.46, and that is equal to 15.06 ampere. At this point, which is equal to two VOC, the current of the S1 also rises, and it will meet a current that is equal to 9.46 plus 9.46, and that is equal to 18. Nine two ampere. So the current versus the voltage characteristics of the individual strings are added together such that we have a total number of three local maximas in this PV array. Out of them, one will exhibit the maximum power. We so far have to see in detail in the in terms of the PV characteristics that which of them is 
providing us the maximum power now let us create some uh, you know some change here such that we say that this tv module 32 is also under the same sort of shading condition now if this is if this happens then the iv characteristic curve of the string s1 and s2 remains essentially the same so this is sort of a characteristic for the string s1 and same characteristic will also appear across this string s2 because now both of these have same irradiation condition two of the these uh, panels in string s1 and s2 they have 1000 watt per meter square irradiance while the two have around 600 watt per meter square irradiance so this means that both of them shall have same sort of the iv characteristics so if we now join them together we have to say one thing that in each region if there exist multiple inflection point or multiple local maxima which are coming in the same region in the cumulative iv characteristic curve we will only represent them equal to 1 so see they here that we have in this region in this region we have we have this change in the in the current so one is coming from this s1 and one is coming from this s2 so in the iv characteristic curve we will only have one dip here and that will essentially remain the same so the these two single one from this s1 single from this s2 is only exhibiting one change in the or one knee point on the iv characteristic curve of the tv array and this is what we we can see here so let me write it here let me write it in this way that we have that local maxima of each string in a pv array occurs the string that occurs in same region contributes to the single local maxima in a pv array in the same region so if we have distinct number of patterns in a given pv array we have to first identify what is the iv characteristic curve of an individual string and then we add them together such that if there are local maximas which are occurring in the same region they contribute to a single local maxima in the in the same region across the iv characteristic curve of a of an array so having said that let us uh, simulate this system so for the simulation i have uh, i have created a simulation here this is a student version of the psim which is uh, under the license given by the psim so here we have four pv modules which are connected in series to form one string here and we have another string connected here further to this the irradiance set at the set at the across these these two panels is 1000 and same goes with the iv characteristic uh, with the irradiation set at 1000 for these four panels and across these two panels it is 600 here we also have this 600 this is at 1000 and this is again at at 600 so this corresponds to to this characteristic curve uh, with the first pattern where we have string number one having two of its panel under the shading and string number uh, sorry string number two has one of its panel under this shading condition and string number one has two panel under the shading condition so the same sort of this criteria is replicated here so i have i am also measuring the current through individual string so this corresponds to the string current one this is measuring the string current two across here we instead of using a resistance i am using a capacitor which is has a value is set equals to 1000 microfarad and uh, i am measuring the current flowing through this capacitor as well as the voltage across this capacitor so this gives me a very smooth waveform for the iv characteristics so let me run this uh, simulation so let me draw the is1 first and later on i will add the other curves as well so on this is1 i am changing the axis onto the voltage v2 and you can see here that we have let 
me bold it this curve a little bit so that it becomes more visible on the screen so so this is the characteristic curve here so each of the panel is approximately producing a voltage open circuit voltage equal to 20 to 20 around 22 volts so we have this 20 this 40 60 and 80 and here we have the open circuit voltage of this array so now because this uh, is about the is1 so we have the the same irradiation on the bottom two modules and we have the 1000 watt permissible irradiation on the top modules so the bottom two modules are short circuited near this open circuit value uh, uh, which is equal to 40 volt so this is the same characteristic curve that we have drawn in our discussion here that uh, for the two voc value the system shall have lower amount of current and right after if we want to increase the amount of current then these two will get short circuited consequently the current will rise and the same is actually happening same is actually happening here as shown in the in this uh, graph so the current rises from this point to a current which is equal to the short circuit current value of the individual module at the standard testing condition now if i plot the if i plot on the same characteristics if i plot the is2 okay this is is2 so this is2 if you see it is its current is rising from this value which is the lower amount of current at 3 voc or near the vicinity of the 3 voc it rises to a value which is equal to uh, the short circuit current value of the modules now if i combine these two together such that if i plot it here so this is ipv so the ipv if you see that this ipv is actually having two different dips here and this can be uh, clarified if i can show you here the overview let me have the voltage here so you can see here that it is now having two different dips here and and this dip is actually happening right at the instant when we are shorting the modules in the string S1 and S2. So in here, this line, which is this blue line, let me bold them a little bit so that they are more visible. So at this blue line, you can see this is for the second string. So the second string is rising from this point to this particular point. So, so this is the amount of current uh, that flows through the array. So the array has uh, has two different uh, curves here. So now if you want to see which one among them is providing us the maximum uh, maximum power, then we have to multiply this IPV with the VPV to create the IV to create the PV characteristics here. So if I plot it here, you can see that this third curve is actually uh, we are getting the maximum power at this point. And this point is giving us the maximum power out of it. So based on this analytical discussion, we can create the IV curve pattern for any given array at the string level. And then we combine those string currents to form a cumulative characteristic curve of at an array level. So in the next lecture, we will discuss more about the photovoltaic system. So till there, take care and love it.